What is the origin and purpose of the papal tiara? Why has it since been looked down upon and scarcely used? Well, there are two, two different questions, two different answers. Uh, the tiara grew um, gradually, <clears throat> and there were several different, uh, several different explanations given for it. One was the three roles of the Pope as a teacher, ruler, and uh, leader or something. And the other was uh, that it talked about the Pope's spiritual authority as temporal authority, and the mixture of the two. Mm. Uh, the tiara, up until and including the reign of Paul VI, was bestowed on the Pope in a very impressive coronation ceremony, in which the uh, uh, the uh, Bishop of Ostia placed it on his head and said, Remember, you are the ruler of the world and the father of kings and princes. But no sooner he said that, that a Capuchin monk would bring a burning book and say, Thus passes the glory of the world. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you're the ruler of the world, all right. Huh. And it's ashes. Wow. Uh, which is a powerful symbolism. Yeah. I think the Pope since then, uh, and everyone else, would do well to remember that whatever power you think you have, you'll be dead soon. Even if you have 50 years ahead of you, you'll be dead soon. And unfortunately, a lot of, shall we say, less regal rights uh, lack that reminder that you're going to be dead soon. Uh, if there was one thing I could tell every head of state in the world, even the head of the Holy State, it would be, you'll be dead soon. It's something you forget, you know, with the excitement of being in charge, where you can do things, and you open your mouth, and everybody's jumping up and down and excited about you. You tend to forget you'll be dead soon. Okay. Yeah. So. That's well, new. Nor I, I thought you, you wanted to say to them, bad things happen to stupid people. But that too. <laughs> that too. And stupid people who do bad things, or bad things happen because they're stupid, who then die. Yeah. Stupidity can be a sin, you know, if it's willful. Anyway, uh, as to why it was gotten rid of, well, I hate to speak badly of the dead, but let's just put it this way. Clerics, like everyone else, are very much creatures of the world they live in. Uh, there was a superstition held by many clerics, especially of the higher sort, in the 60s, that the uh, temporal aspects of the papacy were bad, and that what was needed was to simplify everything and return to the simplicity of the apostles. Okay. This was a, uh, this was mouthed constantly in those days. I, several people, including one bishop who suggested this to me years ago, I, I said, well, then why don't we start with an unpaid clergy? <laughs> the way our Lord said. Uh-huh. Uh, and the, re the reactions to that were very strange. Apparently getting rid of the tiara was okay, but not getting rid of the rectory. Wow, that's surprising that they would react negatively to that. Well, is it? You would think they would simply have given up their rectory and lived you know, in the church yeah. the way they used to. Yeah. And just been with their people. But no. See, one of the things you find about human nature is that we tend to be the opposite of what comes out of our mouths. The more certain we are this way, very often the less our lives comport to it. So one of the things you'll find, and not just in the church, but with modern people in general, <clears throat> in authority, is that they disdain the trappings of their office. And, you know, they want about how humble they are. But when it comes to making decisions, they are in charge, and you better like it. Uh, I remember uh, one archbishop in particular who sold the bishop's palace, but he kept his winter home in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. It was a real testament to something. Uh, you know, similarly, uh, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to make too big of a point of it. But one of the problems with the papal apartments. And I, I can understand why someone who was elected pope that had a high opinion of himself and his own views as opposed to the traditions of the church uh -huh. would look askance at the papal apartments, and not because of their beauty, but because what do the papal apartments really say? So you're pope. Just like the, the 11th. 
Uh, oh, you don't remember him? Neither does anyone else, Holy Father. Uh, You'll be dead soon. And if the holder of the office was a true modern person, that's the last thing you'd want to hear. I see. So what he would want to do is set up, sort of camp out in a kind of motel, where on the one hand people would think he was very humble because he was living in the Apostolic Palace. Yeah. But on the other, it would be all about him. Unfortunately, after a while he'd probably get tired of it. But it would be impossible for him to move because he yeah. can't change his mind. So, uh, it's all a piece of a piece of a piece. Yeah. It's not about my office, it's all about me. Uh, the, the simile I like to use is if I was, suddenly became a city councilman, right? <clears throat> and I'd say, you know, being your city councilman is for me the culmination of my life's journey. It's such a fulfillment of who I am as a person. And I just feel that as a councilman, I can do so much more. And finally, like, yeah, councilman, well, that's nice. You ever going to fill the potholes, maybe get the trash picked up? Oh, no, no, that's the old view of what a city councilman does. I'm into the new paradigm. It's much more expansive than that. Sounds good. Sounds really good. The yeah. problem is it's garbage. <laughs> and so am I. <laughs> you know, I'm here bloviating about this stuff. Meanwhile, the trash is piling up. You know, you can't drive 10 yards without your car going into a sub hole. <laughs> but I'm very full of myself. It's all wonderful. Look at me. And I guarantee you I'd be president every bloody Hollywood opening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.